All right, guys, I finally finished my newest trailer build. This is the double kayak trailer build that I've been working on for the past few weeks. Just finished putting the final touches on it. So this week's video, I'm gonna walk you through this entire build. We're gonna go from the front of this trailer to the very back, show you exactly how I built this thing, all of the products that I used to build these trailers and why I built this one the way that I did. Y'all stick around. What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, my name's TJ. Welcome to Kayak USA. So like I just said, today we're gonna be going over my latest build. Now, if you have not been following along, there is a part one to this video. This is part two. There is a part one that I filmed and uploaded about two weeks ago on my channel. And that's where I went and found this old double jet ski trailer. We brought it back here to the garage. I stripped it down and I welded up these EMT runners. So if you've got questions about the runners and I don't go over them as much as you would like in this video, you can always go watch part one and you can see exactly how I build these EMT runners, how I bend them and weld them up and measure and all that good stuff. So you can check out that video. I'll link it here and it'll be linked in the video description below. This video, I'm gonna walk you from the front to the back, like I just said, and we're gonna go over every detail of this trailer. I pre-filmed me building the rest of this trailer. And so this video might be a little bit different than I usually do. You're not gonna watch me do it live. I'm kinda gonna go over it and overlay the footage of me doing what I've done all the way from the front to the back so you can see exactly how I've done it. But before we get into that, I do wanna give a huge shout out to this week's video sponsor. And I'm pointing over here because it is wreck stuff. That is where I get my wheels and tires and fenders. I get them all from a company called wreckstuff.com. If you're building a trailer like me, go check out their website. They have a very nice website. They carry any kind of wheels or tires for trailers that you can think of. You can just go on there, you select the size of wheel that you're looking for, scroll down. And what I really like about this company is you can pick out the rims that you want. And as you're in the you know area where your wheels are that you've picked out, you can choose to go ahead and add valve stems. You can choose to go ahead and have wheel uh, tires mounted and balanced. And that saves so much time because I love getting these wheels here and I don't have to go and get the tires mounted. They show up mounted. All I gotta do is put them on the trailer and I'm ready to go. And you can also get lug nuts. You can get trailer lights. You, you can get anything you need for your kayak trailer off of wreckstuff.com. And for the fenders, they also have a sister website, kind of like a sister company, but the owner owns both of these websites. The other one is trailerfenders.com then you can kind of guess what that website specializes in. And that is where I usually get all of my fenders for these kayak trailer builds. I didn't need them for this specific build because the fenders on this trailer were in good shape. But as you know, last year we built that single kayak trailer. I bought the black plastic fenders and put it on that trailer from trailerfenders.com and they worked great. I highly recommend both of these websites. I was actually buying their wheels, tires, fenders, lights, Way before I started being sponsored by these guys, I've, I've used them for so long. It just so happens that we work well together and now they like to sponsor these build videos like this. So go check them out. I've also got a promo code. I'm gonna put it right here on the screen. It is KayakUSA10. Throw it in at checkout and it will save you 10% on your order. So if you go on there and you get a $200 set of wheels and tires, which you can get way cheaper than that, but if you go on there, say you get your bills 200 bucks, you throw in my promo code, bam just gave you 20 bucks. It's just like I handed you a $20 bill. It's that easy. So y'all go check them out. They are really great guys, all kidding aside. It is the only place I go to buy these wheels and tires and fenders for these kayak trailer builds. And I've built a lot of kayak trailers. They are the best. You get your order within two or three days after you order it, ship straight to your house. You just throw them on, throw on the provided lug nuts. If you order them with your, you know, your wheels and you're ready to rock and roll. So go check them out, wreckstuff.com and trailerfenders.com. I appreciate you guys for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to the build. So to catch some of you guys up, if you didn't see the part one video, I found this double jet ski trailer not far from my house. I found it listed on Facebook Marketplace. Now, a couple of months ago, I made a video specifically telling you guys how to find these trailers and what to start with and what to look for when you're wanting to build your own DIY kite trailer. I highly recommend right now that you don't try to build your 
you know, your trailer frame from scratch because steel is so expensive. You're gonna be better off in the long run finding somebody that's got an old boat or an old jet, old jet ski. And what I look for is sometimes you can find an old boat on a good trailer and they're wanting to sell the boat for almost nothing and the trailer comes with it because it maybe have a blowed motor or the jet ski's bad or whatever. But you can usually buy them both either sell the boat or jet ski for parts that's sitting on it or just take it to the dump and haul it off and have that investment into that trailer because then you can bring it home and you've got a good base to start with. Building them from scratch right now is just so expensive. The, the steel is the same price as aluminum right now and it's just kind of outrageous. So find you an old one like I did. This one was sitting in the weeds. My last one, my single kayak trailer we built last year, I found it. I actually, my buddy of mine actually found it, bought it, and then I went and got it from him. But just go look around on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, you will find you one, I promise. If you're close to a river, just ride around. Usually people have them sitting in their front yard for sale and you can just go, you know, maybe find a good deal there. But anyway, that is where I found this kayak trailer or this jet ski trailer, and that is my base starting with. I wanted it wide, and this is actually the widest one that I could find, and it still fits in my garage, I mean, Barely, I've got maybe an inch and a half off each fender fitting this thing in and out, but it does fit in here. And I wanted a wide one like that because I have two Hobie Pro Angler 14s. They are, I think, the biggest fishing kayaks on the market at the moment. And I didn't want them hanging over the outside of the trailer. I wanted them within the fenders and I think it looks better that way. I think it's a lot safer to haul them that way, but you can build. There's several people who build kayak trailers that are over the fenders. It's completely fine, but my preference is I wanted these kayaks within the walls of this because eventually I plan on maybe putting a second tier and I wanted that room over there, around the outside to come off with if we go that route. So remember that, maybe this winter we're gonna be doing some more mods to this trailer. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can watch the transformation of this trailer over the next year. But anyway, I'm gonna grab the camera, I'm gonna open these garage doors so you're probably gonna hear some traffic, but I gotta get some better lighting in here. We're gonna walk from the front to the back. I'm gonna show you every product that I bought, every little weld that I've done, all these little brackets that I added. I'll kind of show you how I done it and I'll voice over, I guess, uh, why I did it the way that I did it. All right, starting at the very front of this trailer. So as you know, if you did watch part one, that I do have an extension for this tongue. I'm not gonna put it on just yet because I think this is gonna be long enough. If it's not, maybe I'll do a second video where I show you guys how to extend the tongue. I actually did extend the tongue on this one. If y'all didn't see that video, I'll link that build video right here for that single kayak trailer. But this one, uh, we didn't extend it. So all I did was after I, you know, I got a good coat of paint on here and I went ahead and decided to replace this rusted out hitch receiver or receiver hitch, whatever it's called, it's on Amazon. By the way, everything in this video that I'm gonna go over and show you guys today, I'm gonna have linked in the video description. So if you see something I used in this build, check the video description below. Odds are I'm gonna have you a link down there to wherever I got it. That way, if you need it for your build, you can click it and go get it. But what I like to do with these kayak trailer builds is I like to get me one of these things. And my truck takes a seven pin. If your truck takes a seven pin, they work so much better and they last so much longer than those little cheap, you know, regular trailer light plugs. I've got the same plug on that one. You probably can't see it, but I put these on all of my builds and you don't have to wire them in. The good thing about this is whenever you have one of these, it plugs directly into your, you know, your wiring. So if you're running new wiring or if you just want to add a seven pin plug, they sell these things on Amazon. Like I said, I'll have it linked below, but what I like to do is I plug it up to the wiring harness and I put a big sheet of uh, heat shrink over the connection and, and heat it up really good, seal it tight. Sometimes I'll tape it up with some zip tape and then it goes into the frame. So the only thing that sticks out is this rubberized coil seven pin plug, which I love this thing. You can plug it up and it extends out. It comes back in. It's not a, this long, you know, you know how they look. The other ones look horrible. This one functions very well. It lasts a lot longer and it looks a lot better. So that is the reason that I go with these. I always like to replace my chains. These are brand new chains. You can get these on Amazon. They also carry them at Harbor Freight, pretty cheap. So if you've got a Harbor Freight near you and try to find the ones with these locking pins, so they, it's not just the hook. So whenever you click it onto your truck, it'll just latch on and hang on like that. So I always go with that. Uh, didn't replace the, the, the 
what do you call this thing, the old kick down wheel or whatever. Didn't have to replace it, it still works pretty good. I gotta clean the rust off of the inside part there, but it functions really good. I was able to add the box. I talked in the last video about, I drove all the way to Harbor Freight to buy this box. Got there, it was $179 and I just couldn't make myself pay for it. But luckily, Memorial Day came, they had a big sale on them, and I was able to get this thing for 119. So I went and snatched it up, and I love it. I actually bolted it on with some square U-bolts, and I highly recommend going that route if you're gonna add a box to your trailer. This box is gonna be for hauling my straps or you know life jackets or whatever I need that I don't throw in the back of the truck. I can throw in here, especially if we get back from a trip and it's wet. I can, and if, if it'll fit in here, I can throw it in here and I won't have to you know, mildew up the truck and it'll be safe, I can lock it up. But using these U-bolts, the reason I recommend that is because if you go from the bottom of the trailer up through your box, you put your nuts and washers on on the inside, the only way somebody could take this box off is if they cut that U-bolt. You can't just unbolt this box and walk off with it. So. Really, really like adding these to my kayak trailers. There wasn't any room on this one to add one, so I couldn't really add it, but I ended up putting the spare up front on that single one. And this one worked out great because I'm gonna have the storage, the you know the spare behind it, it's gonna work out good. I added some marine mat to this build, and you're gonna see that as we walk through this build. This uh, worked out pretty good. I may end up changing this because I'm, I'm dabbling a bit in cutting my own marine mat. I actually ordered a full sheet of marine mat and I'm learning how to route it out myself and put lines and stuff in it. So I may end up changing this. I'm gonna try to put my logo in a dark gray to match my runners and put my logo on the top of this box. I don't know, we'll see. But for now, I've got this one put on there. It's gonna work out pretty good. I'm gonna end up putting some foam in the bottom of this to cover up where I had to bolt my U-bolts on, put some foam down there so what I do stuff in there when I'm traveling, it's not really loud and banging around because this thing is metal and it's kind of it's kind of heavy duty though. I like it. It works really good for these builds. Moving on back, I've got my spare. Now you guys tell me, which rims do you think are the best? These are, these are the ones I picked out for the new trailer and I'll show you these. These are for the single trailer. I went with black last year on this kind of teardrop five-star style. And then this year I went with the more square with the gray because I think that gray will match my truck a little bit better, but I like that a lot. So y'all tell me which ones you like better. Last year's on the single trailer or these new ones right here, but that thing worked out good. The way I've got this mounted is I ordered from wreckstuff.com. They also carry spare tire mounts. So I ordered a little short one, Let's see if I can get a shot of it right there. And you know, I mounted this, this board down the center of this trailer and I recarpeted it. I did it in the last week, the last video, the part one video, but I carpeted this board and put it on here. And that's where this spare is mounted to. They sell them where they stick off a little bit longer. I can show you the, this one on the single trailer. See, I've got this one mounted right off the side and see it sticks out a little bit further and gets it away from everything so I'm not, it's not in the way, but I like having that on the side of the trailer just in case something happens, you got a spare, it's locked on there. Well, this one, I don't have a lock on here yet, but I will be putting a lock that goes through the rim, around the board and up, and I'm probably gonna end up putting a spare tire cover over this one. Even though, you know, the rim looks nice, it matches, but it's facing up and I think being left outside and stuff a lot that it could get sun, you know, sun damage or whatever. I'd rather protect that since it is a nice wheel, it's a matching rim. I'm probably gonna put a cover over it just to protect it and to keep, you know, make somebody think twice about wanting to walk off with it or try to walk off with it. Anyway, moving on. So I painted it flat black. The entire trailer is done. I actually, uh, if you did watch the part one video, I used that tractor implement paint I ended up not liking it. I ended up uh, scuffing the trailer back down and I went back with my Rust-Oleum flat black oil-based uh, paint. I absolutely love it. I'll have it linked below. That is what I love to put on all these trailers because it looks clean. It's a nice flat look. It dries really even. You can roll it on and paint it with a paintbrush and it, it doesn't make a mess. I, I really like going that route. But that's the paint I went with. Let's see, where am I at? 
I went with these eye bolt hooks and you'll see why whenever we put the kayaks on this trailer here in a minute and you'll see how my actual ratchet strap system works where they pull up over. I've got four eye bolts that I bolted into the frame on the inside and my ratchet straps are gonna come over the kayak and click right onto those eye bolts and work really good. So here are my runners or my bunks, whatever you guys call them. Made these in the first video. They look fantastic. I think these are the best bunks that I have built so far. I'm really proud of these things. These are nothing more than 10 foot sticks of two inch EMT. And I've got some of these plugs that just go into the back of them. It makes it look cleaner. It kind of caps off the end. Got them on both ends. Show you this end as well. So they're not just open. They, you know, water can't get in them once you get them plugged up and it makes a good clean look on them. I really like using those plugs. And something I did different with these versus the other ones, you know, my single, I carpeted them. And I've got a video where I actually showed you guys how I put carpet on these bunks. But these, I wanted to do something different. Whether I keep it this way or not, we'll find out, time will tell. But I ended up doing these strips. Now, I do have marine mat on this kayak, but these strips, I ordered before I got my marine mat kit in and I put them on here. I'm gonna see how well they do and I'll let you guys know, but I might end up pulling them off if they don't stick good and going with marine mat. Cause marine mat, for, I don't know what they got on the back of their mat, but I'm telling you that stuff sticks so much better than this Amazon stuff. But I have, uh, I have strips of these and I did get these four strips, one, two, three, four, off on top of all these bunks. Got the strips pre-cut off Amazon. It was pretty cheap. So if you want to try this, it won't cost you a lot to try it and you can uh, throw it on there and see how it works for you. But I run them down. These are, I think, eight foot long or just a little bit under eight foot long strips. You really don't need them to cover the entire 10 foot section. So I just got them running down the center where the kayaks touch you know, the most on the middle. And it turned out really well. It's a nice soft pad. They sh the kayak should slide really, really good on top of this uh, marine mat style stuff, the EVA foam, I guess is what it's called. But time will tell. I did get a message from one of my followers on Instagram with a tip on carpeting these bunks. And I'm gonna share it with you guys because I thought it was really cool and I did, I even used it after I talked to him I used it on this build with this EVA foam. Whenever I carpeted my first one, it's really hard to get, once you get the glue on the runners and you get the carpet wrapped around, I had to sit here in the garage and keep rubbing it up and down and kind of wrapping you know, stuff around it to try to make it stay down. Well, he suggested taking saran wrap, like a big roll of saran wrap. I've got a big roll of it somewhere, but like the stuff that you use to pack for shipping, you know, the big heavy duty roll of saran wrap. And once you get the carpet on there or the marine mat on your runner, wrap the entire runner really tight. Get it down, get the carpet pulled tight up against it or your, you know, your matting pulled tight up against it. Pull it really tight and just leave it on there for a few days. That's what I did with this foam. Next, the next time I put carpet on these, that is exactly what I'll do because it worked out great. That guy's really smart. If I remember, I'll, I'll throw his, uh, at up right here on Instagram. You can check out his kayak trailer build. It looks really, really sick. All so. right, moving on. So that is the bunks. Then right here, I added these. Now, I didn't originally have these little kickups right here, and I'm not really talking about the ratchets right now. I'm talking about this little metal piece, this square tubing that I've got. I've got a cap on the top. After I built the trailer in part one with you guys, and I put these eight inch legs right here to hold these EMT runners, I decided that I did not want to put my ratchet straps through the frame. And I didn't want to do that for a couple of reasons. One, I didn't want to drill a big hole into the main frame because, you know, holes just, they end up causing rust or issues in the future. It makes it weaker. I mean, this is, you know, I'm not going to make it much weaker, weaker with one hole, but I didn't want to drill straight through it. And I'm very picky on how things work. And what I mean by that is my eye bolt I knew was going to be on this cross beam. I put the eye bolt there. If I would have bolted my ratchet strap to the frame, I wouldn't have been able to bolt it in line with this because I wouldn't have no way to come out with a bolt. I would have to be over here 
or over here, and that was really gonna bug me, having the strap cross at an angle. I don't know why I'm weird like that. It was gonna bother me. So I decided to grind down some paint right here, and I put these little four and a half inch kickups and welded them on, got me some plastic caps, popped them on, and then painted these to match the trailer, kind of blended everything in. And I did do one final coat yesterday on this entire trailer, so the paint turned out really good. But, I, and the other reason that I went this route was I'm able to bolt my ratchet strap to this, and as you can see, there is no hole on the back side. I was able to use a short one inch bolt. Let's see if you guys can see it right there. Right there, the bolt bolts on this ratchet strap. I had this cap off and I was able to stick a wrench down in here and tighten it down and put the cap on. So that gives me a peace of mind that somebody can't just walk up and take the bolt off right here at a ramp somewhere, you know, if, wherever I got, if I'm in a bad area, somebody decides they wanna take these nice high dollar ratchet straps off the side of my trailer. They can't get to the bolt. They would have to pop this cap off, stick a wrench down in here, and then, you know, they'd have to have a good tool kit with them to get this thing off. Gives me a little extra peace of mind, and it's much cleaner. I don't have any bolts sticking out. This is a nice, smooth looking build right here. All right, the ratchet straps. These are a new brand that I'm trying out. Found them on Amazon. I'll show you what I went with the last time. This is the ones I have on my single kayak trailer. It is a one inch wide and they work really good. This strap on this is nine feet long, which is great. I wish that I could have found these in nine feet because I, I'm going to have to do some modifications to this front strap because it goes over the widest part of my kayak and it's not quite long enough to get to where I need it for now. But I'll go over that in a minute once we get the kayaks on here and you'll see what I mean. But this I wanted to go with because it's a wider strap. It is really, really nice strap. It is a heavy duty blue. You can clearly see, like I can look in the rear view mirror. If I, my strap comes off or I forget to put it on my kayak, I immediately know because that bright blue is gonna show. You hit your button. I don't wanna smack myself. There we go. You hit your button and it reels it back in for you. And when a kayak's on here, I pull this up, go over to my eye bolt. These also have that locking latch on them, so I don't have to worry about going down the road, hitting the bump and it coming off. You gotta mash that lock to get it off. And it just goes like that. Hit your button, it tightens it up, and then you can ratchet it just how you need it. But that is the ratchets that I'm trying this time. They look really good. They're a lot more heavy duty. They are zinc coated or plated, whatever you wanna call it. So they are supposed to be rust free. We'll find out after I put them to use, but they're, they got a lot of good reviews on Amazon. They'll be linked in the video description below. I think I paid somewhere around 40 something dollars for a pair of them. So if you're just building a single kayak trailer, they should work just fine. You'll spend 40 bucks on a set of nice ratchet straps that you can bolt straight to your trailer. Got them all the way around, all four corners. And I think they're gonna work great. We'll find out in a minute once we put the kayaks on here. All right, so now we are made our way to the lights, I guess. These are some Amazon four inch, I say four inch, maybe four and a half inch. And I rewired this entire trailer. I pulled out all of the wire that was in it, didn't want to use it, and decided to go with all new lighting and all new LED light, all new LED lights and all new wiring. So I wired these in. These are wired into my running lights. I've got an orange one on the front, so when I look behind me, I can see my fenders, see where I'm at on the road. Back here, I did the same size, but I did red, and they are linked in with my tail lights back here. These are four and a half inch, I believe, LED, waterproof marine tail lights. And I was a little sneaky, I kind of snuck in a couple of lights here because there were two holes that someone had drilled into the back of this frame and I didn't wanna just kind of weld them shut and plug them. They were kind of equal. So I drilled them out bigger and I went with these little LED plug lights and they work really good. You can get them dirt cheap. They're, wild, they're wired in, they're red. So I'm gonna have a ton of red running lights back here in the back. And at the end of this video, I'll plug it up to the truck and show you how bright everything is. It turned out 
really good. As for the fenders on this trailer, these are heavy duty metal step on fenders, which I really like these step on. So I can actually walk up on top of these without worried about messing them up. They were factory on this trailer. So I didn't have to buy new ones when I found this one. Unlike my other trailer build, I had to get me these. Now these are very nice. These are plastic, uh, but I do have them bolted on at the top. So I can step on the dead center of that if I need to. Got those from trailerfenders.com last year. They've got all kinds. You can get them with the side steps. You can get diamond plate, white, gray, black, whatever you want. They've got them at trailerfenders.com. So make sure you go there. And my promo code is good at that website too. So if you do end up getting you some fenders, throw in my promo code there. But yeah, the fenders on this trailer were perfectly fine. So I didn't have to go with new fenders, which is great. Saved me a little bit more time, saved me a little bit more money and I was able to clean these up and I added this marine mat and believe it or not, I cut this myself. I'm trying out that router like I mentioned earlier and I routed the edges, cut it out of actual marine mat and covered the top of my, my fenders. See if you can see them both in one shot. They turned out pretty good. I kind of like that a lot. Nice clean look. And then on to my wheels, which I've already showed you. Got these from wreckstuff.com. They are sick. I love these things. I went with the uh, chrome and gray to match the truck. I've got the Lodestar wheels. Got the valve stems. They were shipped to me just like you see them. And I also, you can get their center caps. So I always go with their center caps. And if you do, and you've got like a Baron Buddy on your trailer, which I make, I highly suggest you have a way to grease your hubs. And, and by the way, I did repack the hubs on this. I pulled the hubs completely off. I cleaned everything really well. I packed all new grease on them and put them back on before I put these new nice wheels on. I wanna make sure the hubs were good. But if you do order you some wheels from them, make sure you check out their center caps because they've got them like this where this center piece will pop out. I'm not gonna do it because I'll rip a fingernail off. But you can pop this center piece out and get to your bearing buddy and grease it up. You don't have to pull your whole rim off to get in there, which I really think that's really cool. But I got the matching lug nuts with it, and I love the look of that. Man, this trailer is just gonna be sick. And let's see, I think that's it, guys. I think that is everything that I've done to this trailer to this point. Now, finally, I've been waiting to film this part so that I could actually put my kayaks on here. I didn't want to have them on here and then have to take them off to be able to film this part of the video. So I'm going to put the camera down for a minute. And I'm finally going to set the kayaks up here, their little final resting place. Let's see how they fit. Holy cow, that was a job. I'm here by myself and transferring those kayaks from my little kayak stand and my other trailer to this one was kind of tough and I'm gonna tell you why. The EVA foam that I just showed you that I've got on top of these runners, these kayaks, I guess, I mean, since they're both dry and you know the EVA foam is dry and the kayak is dry, they did not wanna slide on that at all. So I could have been wrong. I don't know, we'll see how it loads and unloads. Also, it could be a good thing. I mean, you don't want you know your kayak sliding back and forth on your bunks when you're going down the highway. So it may be a good thing that they stuck. I don't know, I'm gonna give it a shot anyway. I'm gonna use them for a few weeks, launch and load and unload and see how it does at the water. And if it works out good, I will let you guys know. But if you see me pulling this trailer and there's carpet on those bunks, you know that I wasn't happy with that EVA foam because this is my single trailer. Now that I got the kayak off, you can see my, my carpet the kayak slides so good up and down this. I don't have any issues with it really. I do have a front bump stop on this one, you know, so when I pull the kayak up, the nose touches there and I kind of ratchet strap it down. I don't have that with these, so it may be a good thing that the kayaks don't slide as easy. You know, I don't want to slam the brakes and even though I've got these ratchet straps on here, my kayaks to slide forward, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, it's just a thought. I may end up going back with carpet, but. I'll test out this EVA foam, but what do you guys think? Got them both on here. They fit really well. I'm able to pull the kayaks up about even with the box. Now I do have my motor guide still on my green boat at the moment, but I can, you know, I can quick detach this 
and put it in the back of the truck if I don't want to haul it. I usually do haul it on this single trailer with the motor attached. That way I don't, that's one less thing I got to stick on there when I get to the ramp. But either way, it's not that hard to pop, pop that motor off and pop it on. So we'll see. I'll probably end up taking it off for the first couple of trial runs with this trailer just to see how it does. But these things fit on there good. And if you can tell, I do have my boondocks on there, but even with the boondocks, they do not stick out past my fenders, which I really like my fenders being there. It holds these kayaks. This trailer is like perfect for these two pro anglers. I got them kind of even off the back back here. You can see my lights really well. You can walk, even with the boondocks on here, I mean, they kind of stick in the way a little bit, but I could still skirt around that if I wanted to, but I can walk up and down in between here. Heck, I'll hop up here with you now. Look at this. I can get here and strap them down. I can get to my spare tire. Good thing about having that marine mat on top of here is I can literally walk straight over the top of this if I need to. When I'm loading or unloading, I just walk over that. I can get on and off with no problem. The ratchet straps work good. Now I will show you, this is what I was talking about a few minutes ago. You see how my ratchet strap doesn't quite make it to these hooks. I've got a plan for that. It's kind of, I thought about this way before I ordered these. I knew that was gonna be an issue because these boats are super wide at this location where the straps are. But that being said, I do plan on adding a tier up in between this. If you watched the last video, I kind of went over what I plan on doing, but I'm gonna make me out of steel a plate for these that's gonna bolt to the bottom of these boards and I'm gonna have two posts that come up and they're gonna come over each of these kayaks with lights that shine down for rigging at night. And I want a Yakima box, probably on both sides to haul the fishing rods above the kayaks. And when that rack is there, I won't be able to access the middle of this to get these hooks onto these eye bolts anyway. So the plan is I'm gonna get some heavy duty carabiners that I can quick attach to you know, kind of, I'll show you what I'm talking about really quick. For those of you that I'm just completely confusing, I'm kind of confusing myself right now, but I'm gonna take a carabiner like this, and then we're gonna get some webbing. Hopefully I can find some matching webbing to this, but it doesn't have to match because we're gonna take a piece of webbing, we're gonna put our carabiner, and it's gonna lock right there on that, and the webbing is gonna be just long enough to come up and hook to our ratchet to the center of the kayak. So what I mean is, is it's gonna be, it's gonna act as a new lockdown point for this ratchet. So this ratchet's gonna come here and I want our new strap to meet it right here. We're gonna hook to it and then I'm gonna be able to ratchet that strap, pull the kayak down tight. And the reason I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna keep this cord, this new imaginary cord that I'm showing you guys right now, it's gonna stay connected to the bottom side of the trailer. So I don't have to try to squeeze in between here to hook anything up. And I know you're saying, well, what if it falls down in between them? Well, the goal is, is I'm gonna have right where these posts are at these ratchet straps or where my new post is gonna come up. It's gonna go across, like I just told you, but I'm gonna have a post that comes up right here. At that post, I'm gonna have some bungee cord holding these straps that they're gonna be connected at the bottom, then they're gonna come up, they're gonna have another carabiner here, but the bungee cord is gonna keep it connected to our new post that's floating right here. So it's just gonna be dangling here. When I get there and we wanna hook up the boats, I'm gonna grab it, pull it across, cause it's got the bungee cord, hook it to our new strap, strap it down. When I get to the river, gonna unhook it, the bungee cord will pull it back up and it'll just dangle there in the middle and I'll be able to load and unload right there. I won't have to climb over these big old kayaks. I'm not gonna have to try to squeeze in between them, especially with the new rack system there. We won't be able to get in there anyway. And that's what I'm gonna do. But in the time being, for you know the next few weeks while we're using this as is before I build this new structure in the middle, I am gonna go ahead and make my new straps with the carabiners and I'm just gonna walk in between them when I get to the lake take them off and then they're gonna lock up in my front box up here. And then when I go to leave, I'm gonna pop them on. I won't have to leave them on at all times and worry about, you know, losing one or one of them walking off. But that is my plan, guys. Do you have any 
ideas that you want to throw at me, if you do, hit me up in the comments. If you see something that's like, man, you should definitely add this to that trailer, it would be perfect on that trailer, let me know because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to cheese this thing up and put too much on it, but I do want this to be kind of the ultimate double kayak trailer. I want to be able to take you guys fishing with me. I, I eventually want to get to the point where this rig is set up with my kayak, my extra Hobie that I'm eventually going to have rigged out with Garmin's trolling motor. I want to build this one back up to match this one. And I want to be able to take some of you fishing. I want to have a subscriber trip. I want to do like, I don't know, a giveaway where we go on an overnight island camp with some of you guys. And one of you guys gets to ride with me. You get to use the old banana boat, go out with me and actually do some fishing. Not to mention my wife is going to be able to use it. And when I go by myself, I'll probably just put my kayak on my single trailer and haul it so I don't have to haul this big trailer. I don't know. Once I get used to hauling this thing, I might just be able to slide the old banana boat off and, and just haul this big one with me. We'll see. I have been getting a lot of questions here recently about some of this new stuff that I've got added to my kayak. Now, like this plate here, this side bag, and I had a few other things on here that I've got off at the moment, but I'm gonna be making a video of some new product very soon. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I've got a lot of cool new stuff to the market that is perfect for rigging up your kayaks. It is cheap, it's, there's nothing like this stuff on the market. It's very versatile to your boat or my boat, a Hobie, a, you know, a wilderness system, a native, whatever kayak you got. This stuff is very cool and I'm excited to share it with you. I got a lot of it to share and I'm gonna be making a video very soon so y'all stay tuned for that. It's, this stuff is really cool, guys. I've been testing it out for the last six months. There's some really cool stuff coming out of this company that I've, I've just partnered with. I'm getting ready to make the video so I can share it with you. So y'all stay tuned, make sure you're subscribed, hit that bell notification. Let me know what you think about this kayak trailer. I'm really anxious to try it out. Probably gonna get to test it out this weekend. And I'll let you guys know, if you don't follow me on Instagram, make sure you follow me there because I upload pictures every time I go out on the trip. You know, if something happens, I'll take pictures or short videos and upload them on Instagram so you can catch them there. If you don't follow me, make sure you follow me at Kayak USA on Instagram. I've also got a Facebook group at Kayak USA there. Go check me out. And yeah, I upload every Thursday at two o'clock, guys. So if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Join the membership if you want to support the channel and help me out. You can click that join button, become a member of the Yak Squad. That's what my followers are called here at the channel. I've been going for about five years now and I really want to pump the subscribers up and the members up on this channel to eventually do this full time. I'm nowhere near full time right now. I still work a nine to five job. So that's why I'm doing one video a week. But once I get to where I can do this more often and I don't have to work that nine to five and I can just do this, we're talking three or four videos a week, guys. I'm gonna be pumping out some content, making some cool trailers, making some cool subscriber trips. Uh, the future is exciting. I just wanna keep growing it. So y'all make sure y'all are sharing my builds, sharing my videos on Facebook, Instagram. If you see me somewhere, you see something cool, tag me in it. I'd love to check it out. I'd love to see your guys' builds and designs, your DIY stuff that you do, tag me. Let me know, send me some pictures. My email is in the video description of all my videos. You can hit me up there. Make sure you check out Rex Stuff and TrailerFenders.com. Thank you guys again for sponsoring this week's video, and I'll catch all you guys next Thursday at 2 o'clock. Peace.